Hey, what's going on guys? It's Victor here from Cyborg for Life. Uh, and today, before I get started on the video, I wanted to talk about what's coming up in the future. Uh, so first of all, tomorrow, we've got a special interview, so stay tuned for that. Um, but on top of that, I actually reached out to somebody who had cosmetic limb lengthening done. And uh, he was willing to come onto the show and share his experiences. So that'll be coming up in the future as well. But then we got to talking and we came up with the idea that I think you all would be interested in. And that was the idea of a live stream Q&A. So, you know, this is where, you know, we will be actually live streaming on YouTube. Um, and based on some comments and questions that you guys post below this video, uh, we'll be able to structure some of that content into our live stream and answer those, uh, those questions, as well as whoever is able to join during the live stream will answer those questions and comments as well, okay? So be sure to comment below this video with any questions that you have for somebody who had cosmetic limb lengthening done in the femurs with an internal nail. Um, <clears throat> I think he had the precise done, and I can't remember exactly how much height he got. Uh, I think it was close to the three, three centimeters, or the <sighs> three inches. Um, but anyway, if you have any questions for him, and he had it over done about five years ago, so that's pretty long term. So if you want to know the long term effects and stuff, he's a perfect guy to ask about this. So you'll have somebody who had cosmetic limb lengthening done, somebody who had leg length discrepancy done, and who are experts on um, knowing what to expect from the surgery to be answering your questions. So that'll be coming up in the future. So stay tuned for that as well. All right. So today's video: uh, how to pick your leg lengthening surgery doctor. Um, with, uh, with elective surgery starting back up this week, I know a lot of you guys are reaching out to, you know, potential surgeons to set up consultations. And uh, that's a great thing because I think that when you're setting, uh, picking your doctor, there's a few factors that you should consider uh, to pick the best one for you, okay? And number one is going to be qualifications. I think that your doctor should be qualified and well-versed in all kinds of rigorous training that you know is believe it or not more complex than limb lengthening surgery because that's a very subspecial uh, uh, subspecialty of orthopedic surgery but there believe it or not are way more complex conditions such as deformities that you wouldn't believe even exist so your doctor should have some sort of knowledge about those and how to treat some of those and then you know be a good limb lengthening surgery doctor and then that leads me to number two and that their patients have great results okay now even though they should have a good track record of, you know, good turnouts for their patients, there are unpredictable circumstances. There are going to be a, maybe a, a complication here and there, but for the majority, okay, the average of their patients, are they happy with their outcome and their results? Have they uh, had any major complications that couldn't be easily resolved with, you know, simple solutions, okay? These are the things you've got to ask yourself, okay, because patient results and reviews of the doctor is important, okay? How well was the doctor, um, their manner and the mannerisms, how easy were they to get along with? Because even though that doesn't matter too much, it can help with the, the patient-doctor uh, interaction, okay? Uh, number three is going to be the cost, okay? So we all know that cost is one of the major barriers for this surgery. It's super expensive. I've said it a million times, um, but you got to know that you're investing in your, your quality of life here, okay? If you have a college degree, you know that you invested four years or longer into that, and, you know, that was a huge investment. You got your degree. Well, you're investing in getting taller here, and that's a huge investment as well, okay? So you got to know how important is this to you and how much are you willing to put down for it? Because a lot of times, guys, you're actually paying for the leg lengthening surgery device, then you're paying for the surgery prep, and then the doctor gets a little bit of a cut out of that, okay? So don't, you know, think that this is just going to be a walk in the park. You know, you're going to pay for what you get, okay? Premium results is premium, premium uh, pay, okay? Uh, next up is going to be location, right? So I know a lot of you don't even live in the United States. A lot of you don't, you know, everybody lives all over the world. China, India, um, Europe, United States, all over the world. Canada, I've even talked to people there. So... Where, where you get this done is really important because you do want to have a social network near you, but you also want the best care. So if the cost affects where you have to get this done and the qualifications of the doctor um, is elsewhere in the world and it just kind of falls that that's where you have to get it done, that's fine. And you have to do therapy there because the doctor wants you there. That's cool too, but can you bring somebody with you or can you FaceTime them? Can you set up that social network because location is going to affect your social network and those you need around you to get through this surgery and heal up really, really well. Because believe it or not, that, you know, socialization is super important for your recovery, okay? It's been said time and time again 
from both of the two interviews that I've had with doctors and uh, the one that I have coming up as well, um, which is going to be tomorrow. Um, okay, so next up is going to be, what is it, uh, transparency, okay? Are, is the doctor willing to, you know, be open um, and answer your questions and concerns without trying to hide? Be real with yourself that if there is something out there that kind of raises a red flag in your, your mind, you should look a little deeper, okay? You should ask more questions because this is your health that you're, you're putting on the line here. Um, you know, especially this is for, you know, future, your future here, okay? So you don't wanna like just go with anybody. You wanna make sure that they're transparent and open, that you're able to ask their previous patients, the good and the bad, um, you know, you're able to go all down to the bone and find out all the dirty details about their whole process, okay? If they're willing to be open about that, that's a good look, okay? That's a good thing for the doctor, okay? Um, because for me personally, when I was when I was picking my doctor, uh, it was like like maybe two months before I had it done, so it was like May of uh, 2012, actually. So it was about eight years ago this time. And um, <clears throat> so I was get, just getting out of college, um, and I remember that I was, you know, planning on going into grad school, but I decided to take some time off and get this surgery done. So I was looking for a doctor and I, you know, basically my first thought was to go back to the, sur the, the hospital where I had my uh, broken femur after getting hit by a car and long story. Um, so I had found out that they did the uh, internal nail method that had just gotten released, you know, and they were, they were in the beginning trials th stages for that. And um, so Sinai Hospital in Baltimore, and, uh, you know, I was looking at, there, there was the, the head of the International Center of Limb Lengthening, Dr. John Hertzenberg, who him and Dr. Paley had actually built that center before Dr. Paley went to, the, into Florida. So I knew it was a really reputable uh, facility. So I was like, okay, I got to get it done here. Um, but apparently Dr. Hertzenberg was, you know, mainly dealing with pediatrics um, at the time. So um, the person who was actually in charge of, you know, doing uh, adults and stuff for limb lengthening was Dr. Janet Conway. And uh, she also had dealt with major uh, bone deformities and infections, so I knew she was well versed in this. So her qualifications were they, right there. Okay, um, it was local. Okay, it was in my own hometown. Um, you know, I, I knew that she was very personable. She she talked on my same level, so she wasn't trying to like you know outsmart me or anything like that. So she brought it down to my level um, at the time. I've definitely gotten smarter since then. <laughs> uh, what else? You know, so so it really worked out that she was the right pick for me. Okay, and uh, she did an amazing job. She built the cyborg you see today. So. So um, basically, you want to pick a doctor that kind of fits those criteria and kind of you're able to check off those boxes of factors that I kind of mentioned in the video, okay? Because you want to have, um, this is, like I said, this is your, your quality of life. This is your future here. And you don't want to kind of leave that to just any old thing. If it's that you need more time to raise more money um, or you want to find a doctor that's just more qualified, take the time to get that stuff together because this is important, okay? All right, guys, so that's pretty much all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to leave your comments and questions that you might want for that uh, live Q&A when we get it together because I'm still working out the technical details. I am not tech savvy for, you know, the love of the world, uh, if you haven't noticed. So be sure to leave those uh, comments and questions below and uh, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, Victor from Cyborg for Life, signing out.